Tiffany Justice of Moms for Liberty. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to talk about how to repair your school's library. And I want to get right into it just to set the scene for everyone. You're a, I call you a fierce mom. You're a force of a mom, the best way possible, force of a mama bear. Uh, you're co-founder of Moms for Liberty, former school board member in Florida, and you've really lived through this corrupt school system change. And you and uh, your co-founder of Moms for Liberty, Tina, have organized what I consider arguably the most powerful group of parents uh, that that are you know making great change across the country in their own school districts and I just applaud you for that. I am a huge huge fan and you know that. Thank you, Jill. I'm so excited to be with you and I was looking back through my emails with you since we started Moms for Liberty and you and I've been chatting for a while so it's exciting to be on your show again. So, how to repair your school's library? So many parents including myself who are entrenched and really, you know, have gone to bat in this corrupt school system. So many of us say, well, where do we start? And I use the word repair the libraries because as you know, mo many of our school libraries really are broken. And that's the only way I know how to classify them. They're broken. They're touting uh, explicit age inappropriate materials. I don't have to tell you this. Uh, these books and materials do not belong on school property. They do not belong with children. and uh, Parents say, where do I start? And the first point that I really want your insight on is taking that school library audit. How do you even do that? So most school libraries uh, across the country are part of a, a larger system, a categorization system and cataloging system. And so you just need to look into what system is being used in your given school district. And you should have online access to be able to see the catalog of the books that are in the library uh, of your child's school. Um, I think it's really important when you're looking at the books that you have in the library and you're going to challenge books that are there to be aware of the policies and procedures that are currently in place in your school system system uh, in order to challenge some of those books. What we found in Florida was there wasn't really a, a challenge system in place. And so we worked really hard at the state level to have uh, some different laws put into place that would help to guide us and to help guide librarians in schools about how to pick the, the best, highest quality, most appropriate curriculum for students in schools across the country. So the first step that I would say would be go figure out how the books are cataloged in your library system. And then there's a couple different websites. You know, we've never had a national list at Moms for Liberty of books to be concerned about because I don't know what books are in your library, right? And I never want to send a mom into a school board or a dad into a school board meeting upset about something that isn't happening in their district. It's really exactly. important, right, that it's happening in your district. So there are, are lots of lists, if you look online, that different parents have compiled of books that you may be concerned about. There's another website called Book Looks uh, that you can go to, uh, just search for that book looks and it'll give you excerpts of some of the books and a better idea of, of some of the content that might be in some of the books. Now, you've always been a proponent of getting involved. I remember years ago when we first talked, one of your major points was parents get into your child's school and get into those libraries. Is that still something that is uh, applicable for us parents to do? I mean, can any parent say, oh, I want to volunteer for the library and then literally use that volunteer time to go through the shelves and see what's happening there? A hundred percent. You can absolutely go and volunteer in your children's school. And I, I mean, I would go one step further and say, if they're not letting you into the school, what other situation would you allow your child to enter into where you aren't allowed? So um, definitely get out there, go volunteer in your children's school, substitute teach if you have the ability to Ooh, do that. That's right? a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Get involved and have your voice heard. I think a lot of what we saw during COVID, you know, two years of shutdowns, uh, some of the classrooms changed a little bit. And then parents weren't invited in to those classrooms. I know in New York City that parents are still struggling to get into their children's classrooms. And, and that's just unacceptable. So, yeah, absolutely. Get into your kids' schools. Go into the classrooms, um, you know, and, and volunteer to help. Uh, to catalog books and to help to review books. Uh, I think it's, it's a real relationship builder. It is. It is. Now, okay, the second point I have here. So say you get into the library and you're going through the shelves and you see things that do not sit well and are really inappropriate. Uh, what do you do? Do you say something to the librarian right there? Do you go straight to the principal? Do you skip the admin at the school itself and go straight to the 
school board, what do you do? What's the next step? Well, I mean, I think the first step is really to understand what the policies and uh, and procedures are for challenging books in your district. And I'm assuming at this point you have a challenge process. There should be some uh, way for you to be able to communicate. So I would go to your district website. I'd look at the policies regarding uh, library books. You can certainly ask your librarian in your child's school, you know, can you help direct me to figure out where those policies are? But they should be on your school district's webpage. And then you can take a look and say, okay, is there a form to fill out in order Order to challenge the books? Is there a process to follow? Uh, you want to try to follow those processes and procedures that are in place so that when decisions are finally made, they're final and they're lasting. Okay, good point. One thing that Moms for Liberty does so well is that you have coined this joyful warrior mentality. And you know, I can I can feel it coming through the screen with you even right now where you're saying, challenge the librarians and challenge the system that's in place, but do it with a smile and do it in a joyful way. Uh, you guys have done an incredible job in just bringing a lot of information to light about how to get these books out, how to remove the inappropriate materials uh, in your own district. But you've also dealt with all these accusations of book banning and Moms for Liberty as book banners. And, you know, how do you respond to a librarian or a teacher who is accusing you as a parent of being a book banner should you go into battle, you know, so to speak, over these inappropriate books? Sure. So a couple of things. You know, I try to take a, a, a joyful approach when we approach this issue because I was a school board member. And what I've come to understand is that some of these books that are really explicit were in the libraries when I was a school board member. And I didn't wow. know Jill. Right. And so had I known, I would have taken action, but I didn't know. So I think it's important to go in not assuming that there's a, a bad intention, right? Assuming that everyone wants to put kids first and that we're going to try to make good decisions for children. We may disagree on a lot of things, but I think the vast majority of Americans agree on the idea that it's not good to sexualize children at young ages. And so I just try to go in assuming uh, good intentions. And I think that's always really helpful uh, until uh, you are shown that there are not good intentions. Now, um, I think one of the ways to bring a lot of awareness to some of the content in the books is to to share the content. And I know that can be really uncomfortable for a lot of us. Even in my home county last night, I attended a school board meeting where we had a lot of parents that came together and read excerpts from some of the books. And there were people there that said that this wasn't appropriate for a public meeting. And the challenge back was, well, then why is it appropriate for a public school library? Yep. Exactly. And so, and so I just really think coming at this with a very common sense approach and, and really holding people to account and making sure that that they know what the content is. I think there are a lot of people who are who maybe you know saying this book banning moniker, you know, saying things like that that aren't really aware of how explicit the content is. I do uh, a lot of interviews, as you know, uh, but I do a lot of interviews with college kids. I'm actually the person that takes a lot of the university student questions uh, and interviews and. Yeah, and so I'll send them to a couple different websites so they can check out some of the books that are where we are concerned about um, when we're having a conversation. Because a lot of times, you know, they're they're very concerned about intellectual freedom or academic freedom, and I say, okay, go check out these books, and then let me know. Would you read this to your little brother or sister before mm -hmm. bed? Is this something you would have been comfortable with, you know, having read to you at school? And I have yet to have one of these students come back to me and, and tell me, yes, most of the time they'll go look while we're on the phone or doing the interview. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize, uh, you know, what's in these books. It's shocking. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, the, some of the experts that were read last night from the books, Jill, I mean, graphic depictions of rape, of incest, of pedophilia, um, some very, very concerning stuff. So if anybody saw me from my CBS Sunday morning interview I did with Tina, when Martha Teigner asked us about what kinds of books would you like in libraries, I said, let's just set the bar really, really low. No <laughs> rape, no incest, no pedophilia, right? Uh, and and I mean yeah. it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that uh, there's an effort to vilify people for questioning some of the content in the books, and I think it might be politically expedient for some, including the current president of the United States. Uh, but once people get informed on this issue, they realize that we've got a real problem on our hands. What are your thoughts? Just taking this, you know, book banning situation further. When 
parents go to the podium at a school board meeting and they say, listen, and they lay out the examples and they read the excerpts, just like you said, and the board members are sitting there listening to these words that should not be read to children, yet the board members are silent and unresponsive and fail to even acknowledge how inappropriate that is. How do you reconcile that? Where do you go from there if you have a board that is just in denial? Well, you keep a list of those board members and then you make sure to to vote them out the next time they run for office. And then you work with Moms for Liberty to endorse better quality candidates for your school board. That's exactly what we do. We hold these leaders accountable, right? But the Mm -hmm. bottom line is don't stop reading the books. Go read the books. Let them hear uh, what's in the books. And if they want to sit there quietly, read them again until someone takes action. I promise you that uh, once you raise your hand and raise your voice, and share this information. There are other people who are going to agree with you uh, about this. We just finished some national polling where we're seeing over 70% of Americans are with us on this issue. So, um, you know, just don't be discouraged. Keep fighting back. I love it. I love it. Last point. Ideally, we always want to replace the inappropriate and explicit books with quality books, right? We always say, get quality books into your school's library. Can anyone send books to a school library? What is the rule on that? How do you get the quality books in? Is there a vetting process? Yeah. So, you know, your district is going to have a vetting process for books, hopefully. So they're going to be able to identify, right? They're going to be identifying some books that may not uh, belong there, but some books that do belong in the system. Um, And we actually have a program in our uh, C3, our our Moms for Liberty Foundation, called Moms for Libraries. And you can go to moms, you can actually go to um, m4lfoundation.org, and you can check out our Moms for Libraries program, where we partner with Brave Books, Tuttle Twins, um, the Heroes of Liberty series, uh, Dr. Ben Carson, uh, Cornerstone program, American Cornerstone, getting better quality books into schools and into the hands of kids. And so if you want to be a part of that, if you're an author, if you're a publisher, if you're just a mom or a dad that wants to get better quality books, you can go to that website and check us out. And, and hopefully we'll be able to help you to get some better quality books into the hands of children. You're doing such great work. I believe that PragerU kids will be working with you soon, Good. if we're not already by the time people see the full length video. Thank you for everything that you do. Is there anything else that you would like to encourage parents to do, to say, to act? Because this, you know, these book banning accusations are very real and it's very scary for many people. It is very scary and it is very real, but we also know it's not true. So just keep standing up and, and, and speaking out and, and, and sharing the fact that there's explicit content that children are being exposed to. And it's our job as parents to safeguard them from that. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing. The truth is, Jill, we're talking about reading and we're talking about kids and books. And I've often wondered where librarians were when I was on school board when they changed the name of libraries to media centers and they changed uh, the the title of librarian to media, media center specialist. That's and true. so the truth is that we have a literacy crisis in this country with nearly two thirds of American children not reading on grade level. Um, we need to get kids reading in school. So if anything good comes out of all of this, it's that we're talking about reading and books and kids. I love it. I love it. Bonus question, only because I have you here. Here's a scenario. You have a librarian who is hell bent on keeping all of these books that are inappropriate in your child's school. They want to keep them there for the sake of inclusivity. What do you say or what do you do? I mean, the books that were read at the school board meeting last night, as I said, had very uh, graphic depictions of rape of minor children by adults. So um, we're talking about a very serious issue. If if there's a need for children to have access to resources that help them through a, a, a traumatic abuse like that, we need to work to create better resources, right? And so uh, really in your community, make sure that your children's needs are being met. Make sure that the school has communication and connection with outside resources so that if there are children who are going through traumatic experiences, that they have access to resources. The idea that we're just going to throw a library book on a shelf and hope a child who's struggling stumbles upon it is not a real solution. And I think we can do better um, in our communities and in our schools to serve students. It's an excellent point. Very true. Where can everyone find you online? I have a feeling they've already found you already, but where can everyone find you online? (laughs) 
Well, we're growing. We, uh, we you know, we're, we're, we're at, we're right now at, at, at 46 states. Soon we'll be at 48 and 50. We're very excited about that. But you can find us at momsforliberty.org. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, moms, the number four, Liberty. You can follow me at for Tiffany Justice on Twitter. Um, get involved. Figure out, you know, if you have a chapter near you, if you don't have a chapter near you, when you go to our website, click to start one. You just need 10 like minded people. You need to be civically engaged and involved. And then we can help you to build a brighter and a better future for your kids in your community. Well, you've already done it and you keep going and going and going and it's incredible and it's amazing and it's just really inspiring because as much as we all hear all of this information in the news as parents, to continue to hear it and to continue to really be inspired to take action just keeps everything moving forward and we appreciate how relentless all of you are so much. <laughs> The word is relentless, and I love it. Uh, thank you, Tiffany Justice, Moms for Liberty. Everyone, find them online. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to PragerUKids.com for free resources to get your children educated with knowledge rather than indoctrination that we find in schools. Subscribe for free at PragerUKids.com. Tiffany, thank you. Continue to inspire us all. No pressure, no pressure. But, you know, we look to you for guidance on so many things, and we thank you for all the good work you're doing. Thanks for having me, Jeff.